Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about some Moonlight 5 Star Heroes. Uh, specifically, the one that is up on the banner right now. So if we go over here, you can see that that is still uh, our girl here, Dragon Bride Senya. All right. Uh, but in case you've been uh, kind of living under a rock and you didn't see the one minute update from yesterday, this is the rotation after Dragon Bride Senya, which includes Fallen Cecilia, Abyssal Euphine, uh, Blood Moon Haste, that's kind of a big one, and finally Sylvan Sage Vivian. So those are going to end up being the characters that are for you to choose from to roll with your Mystic Medals. And now, obviously, Dragon Bride Senya is a top tier character right now in World Arena. And even some other parts of PvP like Guild Wars. But so is Haste. Haste is being hailed as kind of like the best character currently in Epic 7. Like, this is his reign. He's just really strong right now. So, naturally, in the face of not having a lot of resources as a player base, people are asking, Sue, which one should I take? So that is kind of the purposes of this video. We're going to try to talk about the uh, five possibilities that you can use to spend your Mystic Medals on, which is probably the most amount that we've had in a very long time. So let's talk about Dragon Bride Sen. You only have about a week left to get this character, right? And if you want her, I do think that she is one of the strongest options that you can use to spend your mystics on. Because we've already established the character is very dominant in Guild Wars, very strong in World Arena, right? Usually you want to spend your mystics on something that is pretty top tier. And from my experience playing against her, um, I would say that she's probably like a top 10 character right now in the game. And I think that the slower your playstyle is, the stronger the character is. I personally am feeling the effects of not actually owning this character currently. Because right now, if you are trying to play slow, your best options for mitigation are like Albedo, an ambitious Tywin, and I've seen KHM play Eaton in standard, which is kind of crazy. We've gotten to that point where just like your standard Arius tanks just die to Genua, they die to Gala. So you need characters that are at least as tanky as somebody like Albedo to actually realistically be able to play the game. So if you're somebody who is a turn two player, then Dragon Bride Senya, I think, is very appealing and should be one of your top choices. Uh, I do think that the, she loses a bit of value if you didn't roll for Albedo and don't have her artifact 3F. So if you do not have 3F as an artifact, this character does lose some inherent value. Me personally, I would play her on Arius, but I know that 3F is definitely uh, one of the meta builds. It might actually be the uh, the most desirable or the most recommended build right now. So yeah, again, if you're slower, I think that Senya is an excellent choice for your Mystics. Just note that she's kind of difficult to build in terms of uh, which, how much bulk you actually need. Like you're going to probably need three HP percentage pieces, both uh, necklace ring, boots, all those probably going to have to end up being HP percentage main. You're still going to have to clear like 190 to 200 speed threshold. Uh, and you might need some effect resistance. And I don't know if uh, a lot of people will actually have access to that. As for the other major character, uh, Blood Moon Haste, which we did a guide for here on the channel. This character is actually, in my opinion, the opposite of Dragon Bride Senya. I think that the slower you play, the more powerful, the more mandatory Dragon Bride Senya actually feels. I feel like the faster you play, Blood Moon Haste gains value. And I know that feels kind of strange because the way that I told everybody to build Blood Moon Haste in that guide... Is on counter set, which is traditionally very slow. This character is not very fast, but what makes Blood Moon Haste so good is the fact that when someone on his team dies, it procs Grudge, which gives him Blood Aura. And then the damage on Moon Slash is doubled when he has Blood Aura, and if he secures a kill, well, then you get a full team revive. Which means that you can pick three teammates with Blood Moon Haste that are very aggressive and could win the game outright very quickly, like Ran and friends, right? Or like Janua, or... 
Midnight Gala Lily. It's like something they could just very easily run down your opponent's team. And traditionally how those teams beat or lose, I should say, the aggressive teams, how they lose is your opponent weathers the storm. They survive your initial burst of damage and then they turn around and kill all your characters because they're very squishy, very susceptible to getting picked off. Well, if you have haste on the team, that can't happen because if they try to kill your glass cannon characters, well, then it'll proc grudge and then he just turns around and kills your entire team uh, by reviving his. So, yeah, he's just an excellent anchor for a lot of fragile strategies. So if that's something that you would like to actually uh, play, then I think haste is a better option for you than Dragon Bride Senya. If you are considering haste at all, though, this is really, really important. He is going to be on the rerun banner, which is obviously what comes after Senya. And that runs for three weeks. But at some point during the rerun banner, right, you will see what the character is after Blood Moon Haste. And we will talk about that at the very end of this video. If you are thinking of getting Haste and skipping Senya, and this is going to apply for the next three characters I'm going to talk about as well, you owe it to yourself to see what the character is after those reruns. Because if it's some kind of next level power creep, or it just completely removes Blood Moon Haste from the meta somehow, like it's a super silver bullet that makes him unusable, you're going to want to know that. So do not pull for Blood Moon Haste or the next character that we'll be talking about, which is Abyssal, right? Do not pull for these characters until you are absolutely sure that the character that follows is not one, somebody you want, and two, not super, super broken or like a necessary character. But in 2024 Epic 7, it feels like every character they keep putting out is necessary unless it's like Birgitha. Anyways, on to Abyssal Yufine. I know very fan favorite character. People really like her design. This is one of the most requested characters uh, on my Fix It Friday streams to kind of help people uh, shore up. Because she requires very specific gear, either destruction or like lifesteal gear that is very defense uh, oriented, a lot of uh, defense percentage on it, a lot of critical hit damage, critical hit chance. And that's a lot of gear that people don't usually have access to. So this one of the three that we've talked about, I think is probably going to be the hardest one to build. Abyssal was the best character probably in the game from like Halloween or so last year until probably valentine's day or march when laia took that crown and she's slowly been losing value ever since elvira is a very real character that is played in guild wars in arena and sometimes she shows up also in world arena right and elvira i feel like has kind of taken a lot of the the thunder away from this character the inevitability the days of first pick abyssal are gone that's not to say that Abyssal is weak. I still think Abyssal is very good in the 4-5 pick slot in a lot of standard matches or even like aggressive matches. And I still think that she has a place of being picked early against like Cleave. Um, I still pick her when I see like Zeo. I'm still considering picking her in the 2 slot. Uh, that's a little bit risky, a little bit dicey. But I still think that this is one of the best damage dealers in the game right now. My issue is that she has... So very clearly pronounced counters, things like Savior Auden, which everyone has access to, Martial Artist Ken, who isn't really going away because Landy isn't really going away. So like as collateral, because Landy is good, the things that beat Landy also usually beat Abyssal. So yeah, that, that's kind of the case. And in general, I think you need to have really high-end artifacts also player like you really want like a plus 30 elbrus on her or like a plus 30 holy sack and those are your only real options on the character so if you just don't have spares laying around or just like a really good one in general that's gonna suck um again this is a character whose value i feel like is falling it's not to say that this character is bad uh she's just not like a top 10 character she's like right outside of that in my opinion maybe like top 15 character right now in the current state of epic seven and people are looking usually when they're spending mystics for the best of the best so if you already have senya and you already have um blood moon haste then i think that abyssal could be a pretty good pickup 
if you don't have either of those two characters, I would take either of them before Abyssal. So let's jump on over here real fast and talk about Fallen Cecilia, right? And we'll also talk about Sylvan Sage Vivian because this is a this bears pointing out to you. So both of these characters, in my opinion, right now are like a bottom three to bottom five Moonlight Five Star in Epic Seven. They are not very strong. They are not very good. That said, May 9th was the last balance adjustment. Usually, balance adjustments come every eight weeks. Eight weeks after May 9th is the 4th of July, which is when the preliminary season starts for the Epic 7 World Championship. Basically, the world's patch. Uh, and also, it's when the new Moonlight 5-star will be coming out, which they'll probably talk about beforehand. So... They will usually show you a balance adjustment preview either on June 20th or June 27th. One of those two days. They might even move it up earlier based on the fact that it is Worlds. Worlds starts the actual pre like preseason where you could start trying to apply to get into the E7WC on the 13th, I believe. Which is when this banner also goes live, right? With Vivian and everybody. So there is a chance... That that balance patch has Vivian and Fallen Cecilia on it. We know this because back in January, Judge Kise and Specimen says we're on the banner. And people were like, why? And then out of nowhere, both of them got buffed. And it was like, oh, so the entire banner that's a rerun is characters that are meta at the moment. And also characters that just got buffed that are very strong. So similar to how I said earlier that you want to wait and see if you're looking to pick up one of the rerun characters, there is a non-zero chance that Vivian and Fallen Cecilia are on the upcoming balance patch and they might also be insane and you might also want to consider getting them. So again, patience, wait and see what is actually going to be on that balance patch. Do not roll for any of the rerun characters until the last week. I think that is the safest time to roll for them because then you will have all of the information and be an informed consumer. Now, when I started this video, I said that there's five possible answers here, right? Uh, that being Dragon Bride Senya, uh, Blood Moon Haste, Abyssal Euphine, or one of these rerun characters in Vivian and Fallen Cecilia if they get buffed. So you might be asking, Sue, so what's the last one? So, uh, if you woke up this morning, you may have noticed that uh, two things were shown over on Stove. First off, we have this limited RGB unit. This is not a Moonlight 5 star, right? This is Wukong, apparently, from what I understand. And this is the next limited unit that I believe we are getting on June 20th. So, next week, I'll probably do a first impressions video on this character. So, this is a new character that will be coming that is limited, right? But also, this morning, the Epic 7 World Cup 2024 pre-registration website went up. If you recall, the 2023 pre-registration website had Navy Captain Landy on it, and she was the poster child of the Epic 7 World Championship for 2023. This morning, like I said, the 2024 website went up. Oh boy! Look at who the poster child is on the World Cup for 2024. So yeah, um, and she's right there. <laughs> We've been talking about it for a while that this is the uh, in case of emergency break glass character. Now that's not to say this is guaranteed that it's Luna, but there's a really high chance that if you're putting Luna on your world's pre-registration site when you had landy there last year that the character that comes after haste and his rerun crew is probably luna again not confirmed crossing my fingers that it is but not confirmed but if you want luna again you probably should consider holding and waiting to see if it is in fact uh, ml luna right landy was last year she was the first ever moonlight of a limited hero and she was there to celebrate worlds we're going into worlds it would make sense that we go luna for the year of the dragon as the 
ML5 that is of a limited character. So if you want Luna at all, yeah, in a roundabout way of saying, hold your mystics, right? As good as Senya is, as good as Blood Moon Haste is, if you're a fan of the character, you owe it to yourself to see what, if the, it is the character and what she does. So there you go. That is basically it in a nutshell. If you still are lost on what to take, feel free to hit me up on Discord. As always, it will be linked down in this video's description. As a quick cheat sheet, just a reminder, Senya for turn two, haste for more aggressive play styles. Overall, those are the top two choices, but you owe it to yourself to wait and see what kind of changes happen to the other characters or if the next character is Luna and how good she is. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your week. Catch you in the next one. Later now.